Have you ever been years into a creative project or path and thought, hmm, I like this and I'm grateful for it, but I'm not sure if this is really the thing for me anymore. It can be scary to consider a creative rebrand or a completely different creative path. It takes a lot of bravery. Today's creative coaching session will help you know if it's time to creatively move on and give you tips on how to spiritually and practically do so. Welcome to Unleash Your Inner Creative with Lauren LaGrasso. I'm Lauren LaGrasso. I'm an award-winning podcast host and producer, singer-songwriter, and multi-passionate creative. And this show is meant to give you tools to love, trust, and know yourself enough to claim your right to creativity and pursue whatever it is that's on your heart. Before we get into it, I want to mention I am teaching some creative courses coming up. I'll be teaching two courses on an amazing platform for creatives called DAISY, D-A-I-S-I-E. The first one is on Friday, September 15th at 2 p.m. Eastern, and it's called Discover Your Creative Calling and Authentic Self-Expression. The second one is on Friday, September 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern, and it's called Finding Balance as a Multi-Passionate Creative. Both of them are absolutely free, so if you'd like to attend, click the link in the show notes, and it will also be on my Instagram bio on Lauren LaGrasso and on my Unleash Your Inner Creative account. Both classes will be about an hour long. Okay, so now into the show. Today, I am doing a coaching session with a longtime listener of the show. Her name is Reba Ruff. Reba is a Denver-based artist who has been creating digital illustrations since 2020. Her original work was shared under the handle at Becky Loves Butts, where she would do artwork of literal butts and other erotic art. It was super fun and awesome and unique. But now she wants to transition into doing all kinds of art, not just erotic pieces, but rather creating art from all parts of her life that bring her joy. I wanted to coach Reba because I'm a huge fan of her work. I was also interested in talking with her because a creative rebrand is something so many of us go through, and it's equally difficult from a tactical and an emotional standpoint. There's a lot of letting go you have to do when you transition your creative outlet or output, and this coaching episode will be helpful to anyone who wants or needs to change course. From today's chat, you'll learn how to know if it's time to move on, rebrand yourself as an artist, discover the creative output you want to leave on the world, promote your new creative goal, and so much more. Okay, now let's dive into my coaching session with Reba Ruff. So Reba, I am so excited to have you on the show. I have been a huge fan of your work for at least two or three years now, ever since you first started following me. And I just, I'm honored to be able to hold space for you today and have you on. So thank you for being on Unleash. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Ah, it is my pleasure and honor. So you are a visual artist. You make such joyful, fun, irreverent art, but then you're also doing like this new thing where you're kind of doing still like joyful, fun, playful, big colors, but you have one part of you as an artist that has been like purely erotic art where you started like drawing butts <laughs> and obsessed. I'm going to get into like how that your page has freed me in so many ways. But then also you've started this new page of artwork that is kind of just more like free expression, not under a certain genre. Before we dive into anything, just tell me a little bit about your creative story and where you're at and what you're trying to do at this point. I mean, I started the Becky Loves Buds thing at the beginning of 2020. Like I got an iPad and I was like, I'm going to figure out how to do like the whole digital art thing. And so my plan is like, I'm going to draw one butt every day until I figure this out. I don't really know why it was butts. It just felt like the right thing. And I was like, I can get really good at drawing people. So then I just made an Instagram account and I started posting a butt every single day that I would draw. And it kind of just started growing and growing and growing. And yeah, now I'm at a point where I'm feeling like there's other things in there too. And I don't want it to be just purely erotic like that anymore. I don't know. I feel like I'm in a transitional time period for sure. But trying to like explore what else there is and then trying to decide whether or not that's going to be its own entity. Like it's just part of Becky Loves Butts conglomerate that all comes together. Yeah. So would you say your biggest creative question right now is how do you bridge the world between what you've been doing as an artist and what you want to do as an artist? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that feels like a question. Yeah. 
And what at this point do you feel like is standing in your way of knowing what to do? Because I feel like it's hard once you build a brand, you're like, well, I don't want to throw that out. But also it doesn't fully encapsulate where I'm at in my life. Yeah. Like, I mean, I love drawing butts. Like yeah. I do like, and I, I love it. And I can feel like every time I interact with people who like see my art, like it's always so positive. Love that part of it. And I don't know. I think I'm more than just the girl and I'm trying to figure out who that is. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. It's really difficult. I want to know who do you feel you are as an artist outside of butts? Like, let's take butts out of the equation. <laughs> like, who is Reba the artist? What makes you you as an artist outside of like what your niche is? I like that. I mean, I've always been very drawn to like expressing with colors. Colors mean a lot to how I process information and like how I see the world. So I feel like when I'm do making art like the color choices are a lot of what it feels like like the core of it is because mm. like all my stuff is very like bright and vibrant like when I started kind of growing the Becky Loves Butts I had this idea of like Lisa Frank but for like adults yeah like I love that sort of like poppy bright colors sort of visual yeah I feel that so that's a great aesthetic observation of yourself. Your art is really fun. It's really colorful. It's a throwback to childhood, but obviously grown up and through the lens of like some of the best parts of adulthood, which are like sexuality, being yourself, being creative, falling in love. And there's also a piece of it that is like, in my opinion, like more spiritual or like philosophical, which is that like you really practice like radical honesty it feels through your art fun and joy definitely through your art like play there's a lot of play with your art and also a lot of work on self-acceptance and self-love and I think that's why I'm drawn to you as an artist and I'm even like looking at your Etsy page right now like not everything is about sex like you have one you have a shirt on there that was like let me read it. I know I loved it. Oh, follow your motherfucking heart. Like, I just love that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's still like, it's the Reba thing where it's bright pink lettering and like tie dye, it looks like. And just like this expression of radical self love, but also fun and grown up, but like the best parts of childhood and the best parts of adulthood. Yeah. That's kind of why I started the Etsy page because I was just like, I'm going to throw some things kind of out there in this sort of pool that's. Etsy that seems sort of like large and wide and there's a big audience there already and just kind of like throw things out that I feel and without necessarily like the theme of the Becky loves butts or any sort of necessarily theme I don't know it's kind of been my like little sort of passion project over the past few months is like making the designs for my Etsy shop and like the things like the follow your motherfucking heart I feel like I would I want to do more stuff like that for sure that was what pulled me the most. I was like, if I was going to buy one thing from this page, it would be that. And so I love that that's where your heart's going. And even the name of your Etsy shop, it's The Ecstasy Mart. And I feel like that's such a good description. Like what you're doing beyond the sexuality piece is really helping people embrace the best parts of life that maybe they felt ashamed to do before. Mm. You know, like why I was drawn to your art. It's like, you know, growing up Catholic as you know, because you've been a listener of the show for so long, I had and still have a lot of different conditioning in me around sex. And like what I loved about your page is it let me just by even liking some of your photos, not even saying anything, but by liking some of your photos, it let me admit like, oh, I have this part of me that's like a dirty little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it freed me to be like, oh, well, if Reba says it's OK and she's proudly painting and drawing and talking about these things, then like I can at least explore it within myself. Like maybe I'm never going to feel comfortable enough to draw something this sexual, but I can at least admit it to myself through seeing your art and seeing myself in your art. And so I think that that could be a part of your next thing. Like it doesn't have to be sexuality that always that you're bringing that acceptance to. It's whatever parts of life maybe have been painful for you to claim and accept and like 
find yourself in and find love for yourself around. It could be parts that you see in other people that they're repressing and that you think like maybe they're trying to unleash. But I see it as being like this greater thing of shining light. And you even had something like that on your website, like shining light on the things that are too often in the shadows, but that are some of the best parts of life. Yeah, I've always felt this sort of like Venn diagram with art and sex in that kind of way, where it feels like a lot of it does kind of exist in that shadowy kind of area where like both art and sex are ways to like express that shadowy bit. I love that. Yeah. And, you know, you have this deep knowing, which is, again, something we've talked about on the podcast a lot, that sexuality and creativity are just like they're intrinsically linked. So like even if you're not drawing or doing paintings around sex, like as long as you're freed in that way, it's part of everything you do. So I think a big thing for you in this next phase is going to be deciding like, yes, what are your aesthetic brand pillars, but also what's your mission statement as an artist? Okay. I feel like I haven't really thought about that as much as I might have should have. And there's no should because you've just been creating and having fun. But I think to bridge the gap between these two worlds and give yourself permission to know you're allowed to draw butts and you're allowed to draw a cheeseburger as long as it goes through the same filter. As long as you have your filter for what your creativity is and what your brand is, if you want to make it more based in the material world, then anything is you and is worthy of sharing. Okay. That makes me want to draw a cheeseburger a little bit. (laughs) <laughs> Honestly, I would love to see your cheeseburger because I think it would be so much fun. And I feel like you would do some really wild colors on it. And then it would make me want to eat a cheeseburger that was that color. <laughs> hmm. I feel like I need to think about the mission statement thing. That feels like that is the part that I'm kind of missing with like the bridge, of, like connecting both of them. Yeah. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I feel like in your art page and maybe this is a subconscious thing or just something that isn't even true so you can feel free to call bullshit on me but I feel like you're holding back on that page oh yeah yeah is that true yeah I feel like I've kind of let the whole thing get too much like in a box to where it's like it either has to be like a Becky loves buds thing or just something completely different I was doing this thing for a while with my boyfriend Like every day he would give me like a little list of words, like just random words. And then I would like draw something just based on whatever words he left me that day. Yeah. And that was kind of how I started that page just because I was like, I'm just going to do some random things and see what comes out and trying to like break the box of like feeling like it has to be like a butt or not a butt. Yeah. (laughs) To butt or not to butt. That is the question. (laughs) I wanted to ask you this. This just came up. First of all, I love your boyfriend. Hell yeah. Giving you creative prompts. That's so cool. It's really fun. I don't know why we kind of fell off from doing that. Yeah. What a beautiful part of your relationship. I want to adopt that in in my own. So tell him thank you for the inspo. Absolutely. I was going to say, like, of all the words he left you, do you remember any that felt most true or most resonant? Like what ones that you created from just you took off like a rocket ship when you had them? I remember one of the words was effervescent. The picture I drew from that, it was like a champagne glass with like fish inside. And then it had like a girl like looking up at the stars and like her little cat next to her. That one I felt really excited about. And that one I was like, this feels like it doesn't have to be like a butt or not a butt. Like it's just a person that just happens to be there. And then like the whole visual kind of around her. But I think that's kind of what I get most excited about is creating these almost like surreal sort of landscapes for people. Like I love doing like the butts and the bodies and the people, but like doing something more like imaginative. Mm. That's why I like the word thing because it kind of gave me a direction to go in without being too boxy, if that makes sense. It totally did. It also gave you a container. And sometimes yeah. when you have containers or boundaries, it actually helps you expand because when everything is an option, it just feels too big. And then we end up doing nothing or shrinking or being like, I have to draw a butt or I don't have to draw a butt. I don't know, you know, whatever yeah. the iteration <laughs> of that is in your creative life. But I'm going to say two pieces right now. 
One, if your boyfriend is down to start giving you those word lists again, I think that would be so helpful and healing for you because a piece of your creative life that has been true at least since 2020 is that these challenges work well for you. So when you had the challenge of drawing a butt every day, it started happening and you were inspired. And I think if he can give you that challenge again with leaving you the words or even a word to start creating around, that's going to give you more freedom and flexibility and flow in finding this new voicing of your art. The other thing is I want you to start thinking about what words could be part of your mission statement. It feels like effervescent, effervescent. I never know how to say that, but that word could be part of it. The other thing I really feel for you is like self-love, releasing shame, self-acceptance, like accepting all of your parts, bringing childhood into the best and sometimes hardest parts of adulthood. So these are all things that I feel like are part of who you are as a human. And need to be part of whatever artistic brand you're creating because, you know, who you are is the best thing about you and your art's just an expression of that. Yeah, I like that. Because I feel like I've kind of just, I don't know, like I did for a while really get lost in kind of the Becky Loves Butts sort of thing with my art. Like I sit down and I'm like, I literally don't know how to draw anything but a butt. Like it started to feel like what else is there? Like, I don't know. Yeah. And are there any words or even phrases that you want to submit just like for yourself to start to think about right now that feel resonant to who you are as a person and therefore as an artist? Like what words or phrases or thoughts come to mind when you think about what you want to leave? Like what is your creative imprint on the world? I just people to have fun. Yeah. And that's kind of all I want to express, I feel like, through my art. At the end of the day, I feel like that's what it's all about. I just want everyone to just enjoy what they enjoy and follow your heart and get the bright pink things and enjoy all of the fun and life's pleasures. Yeah. I love that. Too often, like we just kind of forget and then we get kind of bogged down by the world. And I want to create art that reminds people that there is fun and joy and pleasure and all of that. That sounds good enough to me. You know how much the world needs that right now? There's so many people who are just elevating messages of terror and destruction and despair. And to have somebody agitating those messages with joy, fun, embracing the best parts of life Like that's really, really needed right now. And that's what your art does for me. A lot of times I'll be in my own head and something will pop up and I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, like I don't need to be that serious. Like I can just look at this picture of these like two people in a hot tub with an alien looking at them, (laughs) which is one of Reba's pieces of art that is my favorite. (laughs) I love the little alien that I have. I don't know. She makes a lot of kind of random appearances in my art. I have a tattoo of her on my leg. (laughs) The one with the boobs with the heart nipples? Yeah, yeah. And the little (laughs) heart eyes. (laughs) She's my favorites. I don't know. I feel like she's like, she's like myself, how I see myself maybe. I don't know. I love that. I wonder if that for your new artwork could even be your logo. Yeah, I did have Instagram like tell me I had to change picture that was my logo for the Becky Loves Butts. And it it just made me feel like I don't want to change for Instagram, but I feel like I'm constantly battling Instagram with my art, with my logo specifically. Like I got like a random notification that was like, you must change your profile picture or your page will be taken down. So then I had to just change it to like a picture of my face. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. That's just a whole other sort of entity of the situation. Well, that is a frustrating part of doing anything that involves like sexuality or even swearing. It doesn't matter what it is. There's going to be a barrier in place because we have a very prudish culture. So whether it's Instagram, whether it's I know so many friends who have swear words in their books and they can't get on like the morning shows. There's so much repression in our culture that no matter where you go, like that's just a frustrating part of it, which is also why because it feels authentic to you, I'm excited for you that you're going to be making art that, yes, it, you'll still do erotic art when you feel like it, but also you're going to do all these other things and you're not going to be constantly in fear that your page is going to be taken down. 
Because that's just a stress that is, you don't want to have to deal with that. Like when you're thinking and you're inspired, like, oh, should I draw this or not? It will be nice for you not to have to think about that as much. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that's really kind of been helping me with that is, I mean, I have been signing up for a lot of like art markets around where I live. Yes. And actually talking to humans like face to face, like with my art, it feels very different than like the internet experience. And that most people come up to my table and they're just really excited and I get a lot less like sort of like pushback where I feel like sometimes on the internet people say weird things and whatever. But anytime I go to like these markets where I'm in person with people, it just feels like people actually are open to seeing my art and like seeing that part of themselves. And that's really nice that at least when I go and see people, real life interactions, they're all very positive. Yeah. That gives me hope. A hundred percent. I don't know what it is about. Well, actually I do because in my communication class, I learned like the internet literally strips us of our empathy. So we're not able to see something and be empathetic the way we would if we were just talking to someone. Like if you saw something you didn't like out in public that wasn't hurting anyone else, you would just keep walking. Right. But for some reason in the internet, we're like, I have to tell them my opinion. And it's just, it's a weird part of our lives now that we really weren't meant to deal with as humans. But yeah, like, do you know how many bad things there are in the world? Your art is just one of the most joyful, beautiful things. So I think you're going to find that more and more as you share it more and more. And I like these art fairs for you. How have those been going? And what percentage of like this new era of just like drawing whatever you feel versus the erotic art? are you bringing to these shows? About 50, 50. Yeah. Or maybe about 60, 40. It's probably about 60% mostly butts and then like 40% other stuff. But I mean, people, I feel like in that situation, it feels like they're less pressured to be Becky loves butts. And I can have like a random picture of like some goats that I liked or something or my aliens. And I think with Instagram specifically, I've let it kind of put me in a box to where I'm like, this is the Becky Loves Buds page. This is a bud every day. I think it's just, I don't know. I've let Instagram kind of get in my head about that part specifically. And it feels just like a box of buds to a me. A box of buds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell you something weird that came to me, but I think you'll go with my weird because you've been listening long enough. So you know how my brain works. I think you need to say like, thank you to the butts page. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that obligation energy or that energy of feeling like it's holding you back. But I almost feel like you need to energetically like bless and say thank you to the butts page for what it did and has done for you because it opened you up artistically and gave you the courage to start sharing yourself in this way. And now, from my perspective, you're outgrowing it. And that's okay. It's kind of like the same thing when we're in a relationship and we have like, a messy breakup with someone, you can't really move on because you're like, keep going back to the other person. If you keep like going back and like tapping the old well, it's really hard to find a fresh water source, aka new lover. So <laughs> I think there's some level of that happening. And not to say you need to give it up, you can still post there whenever you feel like it, but almost just like the energetic closing or cracking of the door to say, like, hey, this part of my life where I'm purely this is coming to an end for now. I'm moving over to this place, but I thank you and bless you for what you have done for me and how you've helped me share myself as an artist. Does that resonate at all? Yeah, I feel that that does. Because I feel like I have sort of built this little bit of tension between me and the butts, at least now. I mean, I, I do love the buds and I've loved drawing the buds and the whole thing like you said like it's truly opened me up as an artist like it was a good container for me to really learn my style and you know just like how to actually make art and like the ins and outs of the process part of my question is do you think I could just like transition the Becky loves butts page and just like I don't know like post other things that aren't buds yeah I do. Do you want to keep that handle? Not necessarily. Yeah, I don't think you do. I feel like kind of just reading into your energy right now. It feels like this like 
bag of weight you're carrying around with you. And I think what you can do, I've seen other people do it. This is just from a tactical point of view. You could literally keep using that page and change the handle to something different and then save the handle somewhere else in case, you know, maybe you'll want to go back to it someday. Like you can save it on like another page under a different email. I've seen people do that before. Or you fully transition to this new art page, which would be its own thing. I mean, like there's pluses and negatives to it from a follower point of view, but also from an energetic point of view, starting over completely fresh is really nice. And you can just say like, for more of my artwork, find me over here. Right. I feel like it would feel really good to start fresh. I think so. Yeah. Do you like the page that you've been sharing on, on rebajam.art? Does that page feel resonant and exciting to you? I like the Reba Jam. I mean, it just feels more like um, just kind of like who I am, like in a way where like the Becky Loves Butts was definitely like an internet mask persona kind of thing as it started. Like it just kind of started as like, I'm not going to post my face. I'm just going to post my butts and it's not going to be about me. It's just going to be about the art. And then... I don't know. I just started the Reba Jam to be like, all right, I'll post my face here and like some other little things every once in a while and other things that I draw. And it's just sort of like my for fun Instagram in a way. Yeah. I think you should totally transition over to that one. It feels like that's where your heart is and you've been waiting for someone to give you permission to do it. You don't need me to do that, but I am yeah. going to give you permission right now anyway. I think I just needed someone to tell me that it would be okay and I wouldn't just lose all my followers and everything that I sort of built with it. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, there are some people who aren't going to convert for whatever reason. Maybe they don't see the posts or like posts where you guide them over to the new page, whatever. But I think you're going to get the right people here and the people that are going to take you to the next phase of your life and your artwork here. And it just feels like that old one is tying you to a version of yourself that you no longer are. It was like a beautiful version and a really honest version for a time. And now you're in this different stage. And I think when there's any kind of block like that in our creative lives, it does hold us back, even if it's just an energetic thing. And I think having this freshness is going to bring new life into your work and into how it's received. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. I understand where you're coming from. It's really hard when you've built up something, something that has had success and something that has meant a lot to you. And you realize it's like no longer who you are. It's a lot of unwinding. What comes up when you're thinking about leaving this part of your life behind? I think part of the fear of it is that if I'm not drawing butts, then nobody would care, which seems silly to say out loud. Yeah, it is a weight at this point. Like, I want to, like, shake it off. What do you love about your artwork that is not butt-related? Like, I have so many things that I've drawn, like, that I've never shared. I love them because they, like, feel real, like, experiences and emotions that I've had. But then I feel a little bit hesitant to, like, share some of that. I want my art to be as true and authentic to who I am and what I'm doing. And yeah, I think I just need to break the butt box and just let it be what it is. Cause I don't know, I've gotten two in my head over like, does it fit in with the brand? Is it this? And like, I'm kind of almost tired of like having this branded thing to where like, I almost want to like unniche myself completely and just be all over the place, at least for a little while. Yeah. So would you say the thing you love most about your art that is just the art that comes out of you, not thinking about fitting into a specific box, is the freedom. You love the freedom that makes you feel, the way the freedom in the drawings. Is that the piece you love the most? Yeah, it feels very cathartic when it's like really coming out of me in a way that feels like inspired, like it's easy and it feels good to come out to where like sometimes if I'm just like all right, I have to like make something. It's kind of like the opposite sort of yeah, like energy there. And then I'm like, I make things and I draw things and I'm like, I mean, I love this. I don't know if it's worthy of being shared to the world and I don't know. 
I think everything is. As lo- again, like as long as you're not hurting anyone, I think everybody should share anything that they love. Like it's beautiful. I'm looking at your Reba Jam right now, and I love this drawing you have of the woman in the pink sunglasses and she's got her bell bottoms on and she's dancing and there's <laughs> bubbles all around her. Like, that makes me so happy. That makes me, I feel like that's me when I have brown yeah. hair, you know, like <laughs> just the same way people saw themselves in your erotic art, they're going to see themselves in this new art and you just have to give yourself grace as it builds. And, you know, there's fear around any time we start something new and it gets harder and harder as we get older because we have like more conditioning. We have to unwind. But you are so worthy of putting this out into the world and you're so good at it. Like, I love looking at this. This is exactly Lisa Frank grown up, fun, empowers me to be myself, to like remember the best parts of life. And I also love that you're part of it. Like I'm seeing these pictures of you and your boyfriend. I'm seeing, you know, this video, I think it's of you and your boyfriend. Like, I love that you feel comfortable to be yourself with the brand because it feels like that's why Becky Loves Butts doesn't fit in with you anymore. It's because, like, you're more authentic now, so you can't just limit yourself to one thing because it's not true. Yeah, because, I mean, the Becky Loves Butts, like, it was beautiful and it helped me learn how to do art with the iPad and how to do everything digitally and I don't know. I'm really excited about taking it somewhere new, wherever that is. What do you think that younger version of yourself back in 2020, like what was her wisdom that you could use right now? She clearly had some wisdom to just go for it and just be like, fuck it. I'm drawing butts every day. What could she tell you? Like if she could give you a little pep talk about what you're about to do and to expand yourself and fully be yourself through your art. What do you think she would say to you today? That I'm just overthinking this way too hard and I just need to do it. Yeah. Just do it. Because I remember in 2020, like at that time, I was just like, I know I want to be an artist and this seems like a really cool medium to get into. I want to learn how to do it. And I was just really determined to get really as good as, it, as I could. And yeah, having the container felt like a good thing. I don't know, maybe I need to give myself like a new sort of like set of structure for the next chapter. I mean, I think that structure can come from define the mission statement. So like, what is it that you actually seek to do, which right now it seems like the biggest thing is joy, fun, self-acceptance and self-love. Those seem to be kind of like the pillars of the brand. And maybe every day you make something that feeds into one of those pillars. Hmm. and then. Keep seeing, is it actually still true? Is it joy, fun, self-acceptance, and self-love? Like, are those things true? And every day you're like, while you're creating this artwork, you're also discovering what your brand is as Reba Jam Art. Yeah. Along with your boyfriend giving you those prompts. And then if you're making something every day, could you challenge yourself to share at least, let's say, three or four of those drawings per week? Could you challenge yourself to do that? And it can be whatever ones you feel most strongly about represent where you're going. It doesn't have to be what the be all end all of the brand will be. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just what you feel in this moment, in your skin, in your soul, and your gut most represents where you want to go and who you are right now. I like that. And then I have a question too, because I love watching people like, do you know Amanda Oleander? Have you heard of her? No, I haven't. I did a podcast with her right at the top of when I started this. It was probably like the ninth or 10th episode. I think you should look her up because she got huge on Periscope. Do you remember Periscope? No. It was like way back in the day, maybe in 2015. Basically, it was like the first app you could ever go live on. So she would just draw on Periscope and thousands of people would come and watch her draw. And I would love to see you do a time lapse video where you show us what it's like to actually do the drawings because I don't think you have any like that. Not really, no. Yeah, and I would love to see that. And since you're bringing more of your personality to the brand, maybe even one where it's a time lapse video and you're narrating it at the same time. So you're like, okay, today I'm trying to figure out what my new 
art brand is going to be. And the word that I'm really resonating with is joy. So today I'm drawing around joy. And so I decided to start with this pair of bell bottoms I have that I love. And so here I am drawing about, you know, something like that where it brings you to the table, takes us behind the scenes into your creativity and also shows us from start to finish the creative process so that we can feel like we're part of your world. Okay. I have been thinking that like, it's one of those things that's in my head that I'm like, I should be doing that. I should be doing that. And then it's funny, like about halfway through like everything that I'm drawing, I'm like, I should be videoing this for whatever. And I'm going to do it. I know. It's not always the most fun thing. Like I don't love doing stuff like this, but I think it would be a cool challenge for you. I think it would really help your followers feel connected to what you're doing. And just for those of us that aren't visual artists, it is awe-inspiring to see that you can go from one stroke to a person or from one stroke to an alien or one stroke to a hamburger. <laughs> like, I don't understand how it works. And it gives me hope that maybe I could draw something someday. <laughs> so yeah, like take people like me into your world. And then if you add the narration to it, maybe you don't start with the narration. Maybe it starts with you just do it to music because the narration feels too overwhelming. But maybe then once you get a couple of those down, you do one with the narration. So now we're further getting to know you and your brand because I think that's the biggest part of this and why this next step feels so overwhelming. You're not just drawing things, you're sharing your heart fully with us and who you are. And that is so much more vulnerable. It's a difference between I'm going to write a, a generic love song because I love love and I've had relationships. And I'm going to write a song about my last breakup and give you all the specifics. Mm, yeah. I was thinking about kind of that specifically, like the other week or whatever. I don't know. I was just thinking about like Taylor Swift, how everybody is so obsessed with her work. And like when you listen to her songs, they're so like specific to like a situation. Like you said, it's like the messy breakup that you actually went through and like the details. I was kind of thinking about it the other day when I was journaling a little bit and the phrase be vulnerable, but not too personal like with how I'm sharing it in a way that I don't know because I don't like it scares me to put too much on the internet for whatever yeah it's not supernatural it's not yeah. super natural it is supernatural everything's supernatural um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is scary and you're gonna have to figure out what is that line you want to toe but people ultimately are buying into anything because they like the person. That's why the show for me has shifted so much from being like, how could we be creative to like, how can we be ourselves? Because I think all we're ever really buying into with creativity is, does this make me feel more connected? Does this make me feel something? And what makes people feel is when they feel seen. And so by you sharing yourself, whatever parts of yourself you choose to share, you're giving other people an opportunity to see themselves in your work and to get to know you. Yeah. And, and you're going to have to figure out what is the line for you. You know, you're not going to, some things are too personal to share. You know, you could right. be the most honest person on earth, but you don't feel comfortable with that. And that's your privacy and you get to decide what that line is for you. But I do think bringing people into like, what is your artistic process could be really fun. And yeah, it will be vulnerable, but it would make me feel even more connected to you as an artist. I'm gonna stop letting that fear of like putting my face. I don't know. It's like a weird thing where I'm like, I don't want to put like my face with my art. I don't know. Like with Becky Loves Butts, it was like, it felt really anonymous. And so it felt really easy to just sort of like throw up the pictures and like whatever I was drawing. Yeah. Like this feels more like my heart to where like actually like me and like who I am, all of those things. And yeah, it does feel a lot scarier to like share that little, the tender, sweet part of myself, you know? What is your biggest fear around sharing that tender, sweet part of yourself or even just sharing your face? What stories are you telling yourself around what's on the other side of sharing this piece? I don't know. Like, it feels like if I'm sharing like my face and who I am and like all of that, and it feels like if I'm sharing that and if someone doesn't like it, it feels like they don't like you. Yeah, like it would feel like the criticism feels more personal on that to where like when it's just like the facade, you're criticizing this part of me, but it doesn't feel like this part of me, if that makes sense. 
It makes total sense. I really, really get that. And I think it's something we have to go back to. You really have to be protective. So like really before you share something, make sure you're okay. Like really check in with yourself, check in with your body and say like, how am I going to feel when I put this out into the world? Because you kind of know, you know the difference between like a foreboding fear and a, ooh, I don't know, fear. The foreboding fear is telling you the truth that something isn't safe for you. And the like, kind of in your brain, spinny kind of fear. That's just anxiety or like you haven't done the thing before. So check in with which one it is. If it's a foreboding, just at least pause it until you know more about what that fear is. If it's the, oh my God, I'm scared, share it and see what happens. If you hate it, you can always take the post down, delete it or archive it, you know, and just not do it again. But the other thing I really want you to remember, especially as you embark upon this next phase, is taste is taste. And For some reason, when it's us, like with my music, when somebody doesn't like my music, I'm like, well, you just don't like me then. But what I don't remember is that like, I don't like, I've said this a lot of times on the podcast, but I'll keep saying it because I think it's important to know how like freaking arbitrary taste is. I don't like the guts of tomatoes. Like I don't like raw tomato guts. Does that mean tomatoes are inherently bad? No. In fact, billions of people around the world love them. I just don't happen to be one that loves the guts. I actually like tomatoes in other ways, though. Like, I like salsa, and I love tomato sauce. Like, there's so many iterations of tomatoes I do like. I just don't like the guts of a raw tomato. But I don't go around, like, smiting tomatoes for all of humanity because I know there's nothing wrong with tomatoes. But for some reason, when it comes to our work, like, we can't be that logical about it because it feels like it's us. But if we could really start to realize that, like, people commenting on our work is as arbitrary as me for some reason being born not liking the guts of raw tomatoes, it does take the edge off a little bit. Like maybe the initial pain is going to still hurt, but then when you zoom out, you can realize, ah, that's just their taste. I'm going to move on and find the people who do like me. Yeah, I like that. Because when I do kind of zoom out on like the feeling of that fear, it's not that serious. Definitely just feels more of that like anxiety sort of fear than like the foreboding fear. Good. That's good knowledge. And I think, too, another thing to think about is what's on the other side of that if it goes well? What could be the best iteration of the feeling of sharing this piece, these tender pieces of yourself? What could happen for you? Like, can you imagine some of the good things that could happen? I mean, just thinking about sharing that does feel really good. I feel like it would be a lot more just like, real and like more like meat to it you know like it's not just a pretty picture of a butt it's like an experience and a feeling and all of that and that feels more connecting and I mean at the end of the day I feel like that's all I'm really trying to do with my art is just connect with people and I love that So here's what I want you to do. When you post these things that are more tender and are sharing who you are more through your art or just even a picture of you, I want you to focus on the feeling that you want to have and that you want the people who see that art or that picture to have. So when you post it, think about how you want people to feel and completely focus on that and send it out with that intention. At least for the first few times, because that's going to take you out of the fear and into the possibility of hope. Yeah, I like that. And then I wanted to ask you, these are more kind of like tactical questions, but are you on TikTok and YouTube at all? I do have uh, some YouTube videos. I tried TikTok. They did kick me off very quickly with the butts. But a new day has dawned. (laughs) A new day has dawned with the Reba Jam. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, I might. Yeah, I should try TikTok again with just like you know my Reba art. Yeah, I think just putting yourself more places. Like sometimes too, for me, I don't have nearly as many followers on TikTok, so it just feels like a safer place to share things because I feel like no one knows me there. So like if I share something stupid, I'm like I'm the only one that will know, or maybe like 200 people who see it who I don't know. Something about not having as many eyes on me feels safer to share things maybe I wouldn't share on Instagram. Yeah. Like there's no like expectation. Yeah, exactly. And then there and then YouTube shorts, I feel like they're pushing that less than they were on YouTube. But there was a while when they were just pushing out YouTube shorts so much. So if you're going to make a video that's 
in that dimension, you know, like the TikTok, Instagram Reels dimension, you might as well share it across platforms and see if you can reach more people. I have been feeling that like I've just done like Instagram and Reddit. Like I do have like a Reddit Ooh, page. That's cool. Share it. What is it? Becky loves butts. Same. Oh, okay. But that feels like a safer place. Like I put all kinds of art on my Reddit page just because with Reddit, you can post to like specific groups to where like I can post the erotic stuff to like erotic art specific groups. And then I can post like the other things to whatever random art group or anything. So it's kind of like I just make what I feel like making and then share where it feels like it fits there. That's awesome. And I, I like it a lot. Like I have a good little following there and like I talk to a lot of people and that's been a good space for me. Oh, good. Do you have a Reba page there yet or would you transition your Becky Loves Butts page? I could just transition that one because it yeah. doesn't feel as like there's something about the way Instagram visually looks to me on the grid. It just truly feels like a box of butts. Yeah. Just like the grid and how everything's just kind of like right there. Because when I imagine like putting other things on to that specific page, it feels like this isn't going to fit into like the whole. Yeah. Or you'd have to like archive a lot of past posts. And like these are such great posts. Like I think that's why it makes sense to just start fresh on the Reba Jam page. Yeah. That's great that you could do the Reddit. And then I had another thought. I don't know if you've used Pinterest at all. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, good. Because I was going to say your Etsy stuff would be perfect on there, especially that shirt that I love. (laughs) (laughs) But a lot of these things, like the puzzles, the mason jar, like I love all these things. I feel like they would do really well on Pinterest and convert well for you. Yeah. I have not dabbled in this, but I know like a lot of podcasters even get new listeners from Pinterest pages. Like somehow they, I don't know how it works, but I know it's an untapped resource that and weirdly LinkedIn. (laughs) Now that you're doing stuff that isn't like all erotic, I think you could start posting some of your stuff on there. And what I like about LinkedIn is they really share your things with people who don't follow you and aren't in your network. So if you use the right hashtags, it actually gets out. And you could even start like posting about like posting blogs, maybe along with art about like, what is it like to start a new medium? Like, what's it like to like, create a new brand from scratch when you already have an established one. That's something that people really resonate with. So even bringing people into your journey as you're evolving as a creative, I think would be super helpful and resonant. I like that because that feels like something I could share that wouldn't be too personal, be like more of the vulnerable and open myself up more to people. Yeah. Letting them see my art and my process and all that comes with it. Right. And I'll definitely share it if you post something. I don't know. Like I feel really fired up to like make some new things and like actually like show my process and like share more. And I don't know. I feel really fired up. I'm fired up to see your stuff and see your process. And I'm so happy you're in a relationship too that's just generative for you creatively and where you inspire each other. That's so exciting. And yeah, I mean, I guess like the biggest call to action is just be you. Who you are is such an incredible gift to the world. And I can't wait to see it come through your art and to see you share that and share your process and really figure out that mission statement. And yeah, I can't wait for what Reba has to offer. Thank you. This feels so good to like, I've had this conversation and you're so supportive and I love listening to your podcast so much. Mm. And like you've inspired me so much over the years to just like do the things and make the things. And thank you. (laughs) Well, I'm inspired by you too. And thank you for supporting me and the show and just being awesome and being a creative out in the world. It all has a ripple effect and the stuff you make has inspired me and made me think like, okay, like I'm scared of talking about sex, but maybe I could talk about a little more. And yeah, being bold and following what feels good. And yeah, I'm really excited to see what the next iteration is for you because The first one has been so cool. And I'm inspired too, Reba, by the fact that you're following your instinct here and not just because you've already had success in one area, continuing to follow it, even though it doesn't feel right to you anymore. Like that takes tremendous courage. And I hope anyone listening who's in a similar phase where they're realizing their first dream, they've outgrown it. 
takes heart and watches your journey and realizes they don't have to stick to something just because they said they were going to do it. You can evolve and that's beautiful and that's part of the creative process and being a human. So thank you. Thank you for listening and thanks to my guest, Reba Ruff. For more info on Reba, follow her at rebajam.art. And if you're interested in seeing more of her artwork, visit her Etsy page, The Ecstasy Mart, to buy her art and get her merch. Thanks to Rachel Fulton for helping edit and associate produce this episode. Follow her at Rachel M. Fulton. Thanks to Liz Full for the show's theme music. Follow her at Liz Full. And again, thank you. If you like what you heard today, remember to rate, review, and follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Share the show with a friend and post about it on social media. Tag me at Lauren LaGrasso and at Unleash Your Inner Creative, and I will repost to share my gratitude. Also tag the guests at Reba Jam Art so they can share as well. My wish for you this week is that you take creative inventory and ask if there's anything in your creative lineup that doesn't really feel like you anymore. It's okay to move on from something that you have built up. You don't need permission from anyone to do that except for yourself. It all comes from within you. And yeah, it's okay to leave something behind and be grateful and bless it for what it's given you and move on toward what feels more like you. I love you and I believe in you. Talk with you next week.